Good day, welcome to News Now on TV360. I'm Thelma Okoro. As the February elections draw closer, foreign observers from the European Union say they would not be deployed to the northeastern part of, the, of Nigeria to monitor the 2015 elections. European Union's chief observer, Santiago Aixela, made this known to journalists while speaking to them on the role of the observers in the elections. The um, European electoral mission is a big mission. It's a mission that starts in November and it will be in place until mid-April. Then it's not only uh, the problem what happens on the electoral day, it's what happened during all the big space of time. How the primaries has been done, uh, how it's respected the law, how respected, I will say, the uh, propaganda, the media, and also afterwards any possible claim after elections. And that is our role, not just to follow up the day of election. It will be impossible in a country so big with so many inhabitants as has uh, Nigeria to cover everything. And I can tell you that we are the mission more important, the biggest mission that there is in all the world for this election and for any other election. And for the Northeast, of course, we can't be there for security reasons, obvious security reasons. But anyhow, we have people deployed very close to the Northeast, and we have contacts there on, the, on this area, and then we try to have the better information as we can have on the Northeast. But the present situation don't allow us to go to the Northeast. The National Human Rights Commission says it will prosecute any politician who engages in hate speeches ahead of the February elections. The commission said they will also indict politicians who incite their supporters to violence through hate speeches, adding that a list of offenders was already being compiled. The director of monitoring of the NHRC, Tony Ojuko, said the NHRC is keeping records of names of some politicians making inciting comments through various social media platforms and even on media's media and in course they will also be prosecuted he said the overarching goal of the commission's monitoring exercise is to support efforts to strengthen democrat democracy and support the conduct of a peaceful and credible election that meets the international standards of the international community the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEX, has disqualified seven governorship candidates from various political parties across the country from contesting in the February 28th governorship elections. The governorship candidates were rejected by INEC after they failed to nominate their running mates before the expiration of the deadline given to them. The parties that were affected by this exercise were the People's Party of Nigeria, PPN in Delta State, Labour Party in Niger State, New Nigeria People's Party, NMPP in Ogun State, Unity Party of Nigeria in Oyo State, United Democratic Party in River State, and People's Democratic Movement in Sokoto and Zamfara States, respectively. The All Progressives Congress says it has uncovered a fresh plot by those it called anti-democratic forces to use the courts to postpone or scuttle next month's general elections. In a statement in Lagos Tuesday by its spokesperson, Alhaji Lai Mohammed, the APC called on the judiciary to protect the nation's democracy, urging Nigerians to renounce those behind the plot. The party's accusations come on the heels of a lawsuit filed against APC's presidential candidate, General, General Muhammadu Buhari, a case instituted at the Federal High Court in Abuja on Monday against Buhari accused him of lack, lacking qualifications to contest in the February 14 presidential election. Now, this claim has since been denied by the party, which says the suit was the first in a series of court cases to be instituted to stop the polls. The APC said President Goodluck Jonathan was terrified because if the election holder scheduled, he would lose to its candidate, which is Buhari, by a wide margin. We'll take a short break now. When we come back, News Now will continue. 
Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as the savior of the world? Again? We do not just help you track the stories, we we'll break them down, explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. Welcome back. Oil prices steadied above $48 a barrel on Tuesday, recovering from early losses as the dollar weakened against the euro. Brent crude oil futures rose to 22 cents to $48.38 a barrel. U.S. West Texas intermediate crude features rose to 10 percent to $45.25 a barrel. The euros rose for a second day against the dollar after an 11-year low on Monday. Prices were also supported after the Secretary General of the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, Abdullah al Badri, said oil prices may have bottomed out. Oil prices have now dropped nearly 60% since peaking in June 2014 on ample global supplies from the U.S. shale oil boom and a decision by OPEC to keep its pro production quarters unchanged. Standard Chartered said OPEC's decision to keep production high was beginning to impact on other producers of oil. More than 300 Auschwitz survivors returned to the site of the Nazi death camp in southern Poland to mark 70 years since they were liberated. The survivors urged the world not to allow a repeat of the crimes of the Holocaust, which have been described as one of the 20th century's worst acts of hatred and inhumanity. Over 1.1 million people, the vast majority were Jews, were killed there between 1940 and 1945 when advancing Soviet troops liberated it on 27 January 1945. Ceremonies were held way at the site in the, of the, in the presence of foreign dignitaries. It is expected to be the last major anniversary event survivors are able to attend in considerable numbers. To sports now, former Nigerian international goalkeeper Wilfred Agbonavabari has died. Agbonavabari passed away after a battle with cancer. He was 48 years old. According to reports, the ex royal Vallecano goalkeeper had been receiving treatment at a hospital in Spain before his death. He appeared with the Nigerian under-20s at the 1983 FIFA World Youth Championship in Mexico. He also played for more than one decade, with the full side being selected for the 1994 African Cup of Nations and that year's FIFA World Cup, backing up against Peter Rufai on both occasions. Everton striker Samuel Eto has joined Italian side, signing a deal with the club until 2018. The 33-year-old passed a medical on Saturday, posting a, Twitter, posting a picture on Twitter that he'll be joining Sampdoria. Eto joined the toll fees on a free transfer in August 2014 and scored four goals in 20 appearances. Sampdoria are fifth in Serie A. 15 points behind leaders Juventus. He returns for a second spell in Italy, having joined Italy Milan for £28 million in July 2009, where he scored 25 league goals during his two-year spell. Eto, who is a four-time African Footballer of the Year, scored 12 goals in 35 appearances for Chelsea last season after signing a one-year deal from Russian outfit Antti Makachala. Michael Van Praag, the head of Dutch soccer, has joined the race to become FIFA's next president. The 66-year-old has been at the helm of the Royal Netherlands Football Club since August 2008 and has openly called for a current in and has openly called for the current incumbent president, Sir Blatter, to step down. He announced his decision to stand on the body's official website and raised concerns about FIFA's current leadership in the process. Van Praag's announcement comes just a day after Blatter said the UEFA lacked the courage to stand and come in 
to contest with him in presidential elections. Van Prague is one of a number of candidates hoping to topple the leader of football world's governing body, who has been in the job for over 17 years. After being re-elected unopposed in 2011, Blatters could face Van Prague, who is the former PSG and Tottenham footballer David Gagnola, as well as independent candidate Jerome Champagne in May's ballot. We've come to the end of News Now. We thank you very much for joining us. I'm Thelma Okoro.